Oh, and when this episode comes out, it'll be the day before The Art of Swallowing comes out on Naked Sword. So if you wanted to plug that at all. Will you just leave that part in? That'll, that's great, thanks. Great. Perfect, there it is. Watch The Art of Swallowing tomorrow on NakedSword.com. Is there an art to it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to Discretion Advised. You guys, it's starting. It's starting. I'm John Hill here with here. What am I saying? I'm John here Hill with here. here with Mark McNamara. Listen, she's in Scotland. I'm in LA. What time is it even there? Are you awake? Are you alive? It is a little after 7 p.m. here, and I am dead, dead, dead. We have been shooting every day. It's so beautiful here. I, I love it so much. Um, but my assistant broke his foot yesterday, so I am a one-man show. I have already shot one scene today, now doing this, and then I have one more bit after this and I am about to pass away. So this is the last episode. Is there a plot to th is there a plot to the film you're shooting there in Scotland this porn? Yeah, so it's a, it's part of the global entry series, the one that we started in South Africa, then we went to Sicily, Portugal, Mexico City, and now Scotland. So what we're doing is we're going to each of these international cities and casting local guys and just getting to know what gay life like is across the world and getting to know the men, getting to know the culture, uh, going around to see the sites. So we've done a lot of uh, sightseeing and seed swallowing. Speaking of, oh. Art of Swallowing you know, comes out now on NakedSword.com. <laughs> Go ahead, my love. I can't wait to see that. I definitely need uh, the tutorial. Our last episode was very popular. I, I was scrolling around on TikTok, and I noticed that the Willem clip where she showed um, the whole, the uh, human diorama, uh, <laughs> was quite compelling. <laughs> and people really like to go in on the comments. I, I, I knew that, that people had, they were age shaming me on TikTok, but I really have noticed, I see all of you um, claiming that old grandpappy really? is just, you know, letting them flap around during the podcast i get it i'm you know i don't I know i don't next I, month i think that people love you and love the way you look maybe i haven't read the comments i love I my feel... age i'm just saying i do see the comments it's and it's both of us it's grandpappies at work oh i'm okay with that i'm 40 i'm okay Me with too. being a grandfather um but may, put comments on our spotify and apple itunes because those are the ones i look at so if you want to read me for phil put it there <laughs> Or give us a compliment, put it there. Right. Because I can read those. Those are manageable. Five stars, make and a comment, stars. leave us your phone number. Five stars, four stars, 25 stars. We're going to see it there. Five. Oh, whatever. Five. Camera yeah, says five. Let's just leave it at five. You know, I've, I've been to Scotland before. I went to the Edinburgh Festival when I was in college. And our Christian college performance of A Streetcar Named Desire uh, you know, you always just kind of get a venue wherever you can get a venue. And the one they chose for us was in a literal like cruising sex dungeon. And so we'd be like putting on our makeup and guys would be just like whipping it out for the they girls. They have too. tours at that dungeon. We just walked by it yesterday. Um, but you, you, you mentioned Marlon Brando. So coming up in the episode today, we have, we're going to break down our favorite comebacks of all times. Marlon Brando being one of mine. Spoiler alert. We also have a ton of guests today. We're so very super excited. We have Jonas Jackson, who is a Scottish porn star who's making a comeback. So he'll be here. John, who else do we have? Well, we have Jim Vararos from season one of American Idol. I love Jim so much. He's so sweet, so talented. Season one, right up there with Kelly and Justin. From Justin to Kelly. And uh, Jim. Jim Ferraros. He has a new single out. New single out. Um, and we're going to talk to him all about that. And also my personal mom from Broadway uh, production of Hairspray, Harvey Firestein, is joining us too. Work. That's a big get. I'm excited to talk yeah. to him and get some... Uh, See how it was like. Harvey's had several you. comebacks, but he never went anywhere. So it's not a real comeback, comeback. You know, he was always, but he did come back in different sorts of various states of costume and many different hats. You know, sometimes he's a writer, sometimes he is a uh, actor, uh, movies and TV and stuff like that. Always schwinning the Tonys. And me and you have had come on our back, so we're all just tying to the theme today. Um, the last time I saw you was at your show at the Green Room 42. Um, our beautiful Cameron was there. So was Kathy and Jimmy, who Cameron was dying for. 
you had a packed house. How I had to leave early for Janelle Monet, but how was the rest of the show? Can you just can for the next thirty minutes? Can you just end the show? <laughs> I want to see the rest. Um, I'm trying to think of when you left. I am so glad you came, by the way, and thanks for even stopping by. It was a great show. I don't know what you saw that was new. A lot of it was new, though. Most you, of it probably. was new. It's kind of like the new version. I really love the the state of the show at this current mo- moment. Yeah, it was super entertaining. I was very upset that we had to leave. I also felt extremely rude. I was like, this is so... <laughs> it just felt so rude to leave halfway through the show. But second row, Janelle Monet, like I had to do it. Right. Well, it's all good. I mean, if you are in the New Orleans area, please come see my show on the 26th of October. If you're in San Francisco next week on the 12th, I'll be doing my... I do a, like a two man show with my friend Danny and that's that one, but I will be coming back to San Francisco sometime to do the solo show, but come see us on the 12th. It's going to be great. Um, but no, thank you for coming. I really love the show. Marissa Jarrett Winoker is my director now and it is, I think really funny and a great night. It is. It I really is a fantastic night. So you will be doing yourself a favor by getting tickets to his shows. It is, it, it really is hysterical. One man shows and can be so talent, cringe. Any show, any like solo cringe. show or stand up, but it, but I love it. I think it is really funny. I stand by it. I think it's really funny, and you're getting something you're not going to get at any other cringy uh, solo show. So no, come on you, out. You really are very talented. So uh, sorry to blow you off, but it's like it's worth. It's worth, 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 worth. But I want to talk about like thank you, like going to see a show. Second row is, I found out how, even though it was super enjoyable, that's, it's too close. It is nerve wracking. It's too much responsibility. You are like, they're looking at you right in the eyeballs. And like, what if they look at you and you're making a weird face? At one point, Janelle Monet made eye contact with me as I was yawning. And so for the rest of the night, I kept trying to get her attention and being like, I'm sorry, you're doing great, sweetie. It was just like, they see you so close. You have to be in it the entire time, which I was. She's great, but I just, I, I, I spent the most of my night trying to apologize to her like she gave a shit. That's codependent like, behavior. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, is it? Like, Tell me, I'm dependent though. on you. <laughs> no, codependent, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nice. But like, obviously, Janelle Monae, listen, she's, probably seen a lot worse than somebody yawning in the second row but i know what you mean I'm were a lot of people on their phones old. um no not not that close up i think that at that point it was like you're in it you're basically on the stage i did do a little recording of it and she liked my recording her management team reached out to me and they said can you please send this to her she loves it and so i did so i felt so special that janelle saw my video um you are the king of geography as we know and so I want to ask you a little question that I've been asking people on set because we've had a lot of people from the UK and Scotland here. And can you tell me the difference between the UK, England, Great Britain, Scotland, Wales, Ireland? Like, what is what? Where do you think I am right now in Edinburgh? Well, I know where Edinburgh is. I've been there. And I also used to live in London when I went to college. So I know that Scotland is above the UK. It's connected in the same, you know, by land. You know, Ireland is its own country and it's separated by water. Um, But (laughs) Scotland is technically a part of that same little clump of land. Uh, And if you take the train up to Scotland, you're in a different country, but it's still the UK. But it's almost like it's almost like if like, you know how Texas seceded at one point during that Alamo skerfuffle? Like, it's almost as if they would have never rejoined America, but they had stayed a different country, but you could still just go visit them. And they had basically the same laws, but a little bit different. Back in the day, before uh, the euro was uh, adopted, you used to have, it used to be such a bitch to go from London up to Scotland and you'd have your English pounds and your Scottish pounds. And you could go up and use your, your English pounds up in Scotland. But if you think you were taking a Scottish pound down to England, they'd be like, we're not taking that. That is not our money. And you're like, the queen's on it. And they'd be like, that's not our money. But now it's all just euros. So I know where you are. Well, Um, it's not euros because they Brexit. It's the pound. (laughs) Oh, well, you know what I mean? (laughs) Okay. So am I in England? You're in Scotland. 
Okay, am I in Great Britain? Yeah. I honestly don't know the answer. And we asked people who are from No, you're not. Scotland. You're in the United Kingdom. You're in the United Kingdom, but you're maybe not in Great Britain. But isn't it the United Kingdom of Great Britain? See, so you don't know the answer either. <laughs> well, no one does. Right. I no mean, one knows this. It's, I, yeah, I mean, I think it is something very simple to Google. Uh, so if you want to get clarification. But the basic geography as you pose the question is that you are in England, but you're in Scotland also. Period. World War here shooting a great yeah. movie. We had, we had this really uh, hot scene today with this model, Xavier Gold and Brandon Dillon. So be on the lookout for that. We haven't had a scene that hot and like, it was just dynamite. It was so good. And, uh, what Jonas was hot Jackson, about it? They were just so into each other. It was their first scene. So a lot of these movies that we're doing around the world, it's their models first scenes ever. So for them stepping in front of the camera for the first time, it was just like dynamite. So I can't wait for you guys to see that. And back to the art of swallowing. What is the art of swallowing? I guess it depends on how you like to take your semen. Like, do you take it directly from the tap? Do you come on a chest and then lick it off? Do you spitball it back and forth? Do you eat it out of an ass? There's so many ways to be our guest. Oh. Um, I think I should stop doing Botox. I think I'm going to do, like, a self-intervention. I think I've... I think I overdid it. Can't really move. I think I need it. I haven't done it in forever. Look at all these wrinkles. They look like a hot dog. Hmm. Um, so when you eat dinner... Do you like eat all your food and then drink your beverage? Like, we just went to dinner, and so me and Chris talked about this. Like, are you? I'm very, very strict in the process. It's, it's a bite, it's a sip. It's a bite, it's a sip. There's no bite, bite, sip, sip. It's one than the other, one than the other. Because you have to clear the gullet for the next delicious bite. Or how do you? I just need to know this process. This interests me. Yeah, I think that's. It's fascinating how people eat. That's a controlling behavior probably that you, or not even controlling, but you like the way you're accustomed to eating. That's what makes you feel good. For me, it depends on what the beverage is and what I'm eating. I don't like to drink just tap water throughout a meal. I like to kind of eat and then and then drink. But if I have a carbonated beverage, if I have a Diet Coke and say pizza, I have to drink the Diet Coke in between every single swallow to really just like nail it home hot okay that that How settles all my curiosity chinese food that's, okay that need that, that that's a, a I, different I need like ratio. A carbonated sting yeah you want to um, move on I, to a quick run through some studies all right, Thotty Toppies, there is a woman suing Walt Disney World. This has been ravaging my dreams all week. She had an injurious wedgie, which means a big fucking wedgie, uh, on Typhoon, the Typhoon Lagoon water slide. It was uh, lodged so forcibly up in her crack. Um, she had like lacerations up that ass. And it's not funny. It actually sounds insanely painful. Uh, they occurred on the Humunga Kawabunga slide which is 214 stop laughing cameron vaginal <laughs> lacerations do you think that's fucking funny i'll give you the wedgie of a lifetime we'll see who's laughing then you fucking little cunt little <laughs> <Can you> imagine <laughs> um <laughs> i just wanted to see you crack up um okay the cow humunga cowabunga um is a slide that is approximately 214 wipe that fucking smile off your fucking face you little bitch I sound like you're yelling at your what dog if i just again. had anger tourette's <laughs> Sorry, back to Humunga Kawabunga vaginal lacerations, which uh, you're in, you're they're coming your way, Cameron. It is 214 feet above a pool. So I'm no physicist, right? But um, due to my calculations, I would think that's high above the ground, and that's a lot of time to be racing through water. Which is, let's not forget, water is a powerful force. Water formed the Grand Canyon. Water forms, uh, you know, the Hoover Dam is water pressure powering a, an entire state, basically. So imagine all that water just gushing in between the lips. And I think it just calls for action. It calls for action on the part of water parks everywhere to not let this kind of irresponsible danger just be waiting 
you know, she has to now pay the price for this kind of dangerous situation just lurking beneath the water's surface. No. Um, there's also... <laughs> <laughs> Are you a big no. fan of water parks? It's just piss. I it's love just water child parks. Piss. The, the, Everyone's just that's swimming fine. in piss. That's fine. That's fine. Disgusting. I know. That's that's fine. But the fucking slide is called Humunga Cowabunga. Close your legs and go down it with your legs crossed, or just don't go down it. Like I'm sick of people suing things for dumb shit. Like if you weren't okay. expecting to get your no, huge no, 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 cooter no, no, no. ripped I'm on not this slide, then that. don't we are go not on victim. it. We're not victim blaming. This is a normal I ass am. person I'm who went down a water slide. Then don't go down it. You can go don't, on record. You can accept th what might okay, happen Mark, if you go down Mark, a slide called Humunga no, no. Kawabunga. It doesn't say you may end up with no twat left. It, it doesn't say you might says, trip up these stairs, but that's common fucking sense. You go down a water slide that's over 200 feet tall, you might get My heart goes out to this young lady. I think it was her 30th birthday, Mark. Give her a little fucking compassion. No. It is no. not. Her lips to God's like, ears. Can... No. No. She did not need to endure that. That's not dumb. I mean, it was she was trying to have a good time. Although, maybe you don't go to water park on your 30th birthday, but yeah. Uh, no, let's talk about something bad. else I got. Ever. Um, the the Biden's dog Feel bad for her commander. Husband. I got you're an asshole. I got a DM about doing too many anti dog stories on my radio shows and on this show because I had mentioned that uh, Biden's dog Commander bit someone and is now long, no longer living you know in the West Wing, and that's just a news story. That's not me being anti dog, folks. That's just the dog it's the first dog it bit someone it has a history of biting it's an update i'm not saying no one's saying that the dog should be killed the dog may maybe it should go down the humonga kawabanga a couple of times but i just think it's, that's another here. dumb story how many people has marjorie taylor green bitten and she's still in the government so why is this dog oh. being removed and she's not what did you think about sunny hostin saying that gay people can smell each other and she doesn't mean olfactorily, you know, she meant they could sense each other. And that's true. My biggest thought on that was that I would love to line up a bunch of armpits and see if you could tell which one's Drew Valentino. Girl. Listen, different strokes I'm, for different folks, and it's just not the stroke for me. That's just what I want to. I love Drew. Me. I really do like Drew a lot. He's a great guy. I'm saying I you just don't. don't share the need for pit that's i also fine. have like a little it. rash in my pit right now that's fine I'll, i can i could i could smell it from here i like there's a there's a bunch of little I... thought topics at the end that cameron printed that i thought were really really interesting ed sheeran says he got yeah. so high off a of blunt with snoop dogg that he couldn't see luann delicep says my performance style is definitely more beyonce than taylor swift work queen ozempic burned off my genitals i found pieces of charred skin in the toilet work and roni star jessel tank calls bethany frankel the most overrated housewife housewife and that she's going off the rails and lastly couples who meet on dating apps are less happy in marriages i could see that because you're always looking for other options there is a lot there you know that's a lot to unpack i mean i have been so stoned when i used to get stoned i used i i got to the point where i would wasn't able to see as well not with snoop dogg but that did happen to me a couple of times um and uh i people like jessel but i love jessel i think she's great but i love bethany oh she was too. playing I, I bethany both Frankel. Sides. right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 i like jessel um okay great shall we take a break and come back with our first guest yes we will be let's right do it back. we'll be right back Welcome back to the show. It, icons only with us today. Mark McNamara, he is still in Edinburgh, Scotland. And now we are joined by my personal mom, Harvey Firestein. Hi, mom. I have fed you from my breasticles for years. <laughs> you were like three feet tall when I first met you and look at you now. I got that Aww. good milk. I got that <laughs> good <laughs> breasticle milk. <laughs> Super somebody turbo asked, charged. Somebody asked the other day whatever happened to all the photographs on the wall. Harvey used to have a floor-to-ceiling 
physical photographs in his dressing room during Hairspray on Broadway. And I think I have a couple, actually. Or I have a photo oh, of the wall some? itself. I think yeah. people probably have yeah. that. Yeah, well, I made that. I made the card. I made the farewell card by yeah. taking the photograph. But, but specifically, people were asking about the series, as you may remember. I wouldn't let, when people would come to my dressing room after the show... See, he's smiling because he remembers. <laughs> I wouldn't let them use my bathroom unless I could photograph them peeing. And and so we had a whole section of the wall of people peeing, um, most of which were, were really adorable. I mean, I never showed anything. I didn't, but but my favorite was um, Lily Tomlin peeing standing up, using, <laughs> up, using up one of those papal funnel cups. Uh-huh. It was, yeah, that was my favorite. Yeah, some of them were so really Harvard, cute, but there were some a... big names in there. Yeah, very, some very big names. John, John, uh, what was his name? Hill. No, John Hill. John, yeah, that was Hill, John Hill. John Hill. So you're a fellow pornographer, Harvey. Joint, thank you for. Uh... Uh, no, uh, um, <laughs> You know, porno is in the eye of the um, salesperson. That's right. There you go. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't consider. I, you know what you may consider porn. I just consider my every day after. Right. <laughs> I actually met my first porn stars that I ever met in person in that dressing room. Yeah, they had a couple of friends. Yeah. Well, 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 they were friends of mine, but I think it was Mark and Scott that sent them over. Oh my God. Um, they were remember, really in it my, at the time. There were some they were very, yeah, they were very into mm-hmm. that. At the time. They had, but, I, but, but they were wonderful people. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, oh, I, I've never met a porn star I didn't love. I have. Same here. Or a porn director I didn't love. <laughs> well, Wait, have, let's ask. Well, that's because you have to direct them. <laughs> they probably don't do everything the way you want. And it's true. You know, like, angle it this way, and oh shit, that's right, my eye. It's That's so happened to me, thing. Harvey. I have had it hit my eye, and I've had to wear an eye patch. So it's it's there. There are how strong did it hit your eye? What kind of flow? What kind of flow did that person? This have? new kind of porn, bitch. It is. Honey, you believe. it was. Yeah, you know what? I I am very old school. I had to say, I don't like modern porn. I don't like. I don't like um, all those shiny bodies and the hairless and the. I don't. I, give me old fat. Like give me. The guy who grabs the plumber um, and says, you want a blowjob? That, that's my kind of porn. Yeah, that is the it's kind like of uh, the point. plot line. Yeah. What is your, what is your boy, scenario? Pizza boy, your, he delivers. Yeah, get, what is the favorite scenario that you have? For fantasy or for porn? Yeah, for porn and fantasy. Oh, I, I, like, I, like, a little, I like a little romance. Yeah. Um, I Thank like you. a little hair. This Thank hairlessness I, it does not. Yeah. I don't need all those muscles. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just real people don't look like that. Like well, natural. porn stars do. Well, look like a human being. Yeah. I, you know, like look like somebody that you would do, you know, if the subway car was mostly empty. <laughs> just, you know, look like a person. Yeah. I, okay, I'm going to make oh, you one specifically. Up on that ladder. I'm going to specifically go take this as a note and I'm going to make a porn called For Harvey that is just strictly all oh, of good. this. So yeah. don't you worry. It's coming yeah, right yes. up. Well, I, well right they have now. plenty of them. They just were all made in the 70s, I think. <laughs> as was I. <laughs> as was I. Let's ask Harvey the question. Do you know, so Mark is in Scotland. Is that the UK and is it Great Britain? Uh, 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 uh. There have been wars over that. <laughs> they, and they, on this podcast no right today. <laughs> and they've had queens, you know, go go at it, each other. There was Mary and Elizabeth. Oh, the, one was Mary Scott and one was, oh, not Queen of Scots. What, that would be a uh, good porn, queens going at each other. Queens, queens for the crown. Now, see, it would be one of those modern ones again. Right. Yeah, I mean, we can go in a lot of different directions there. Queen of yeah. Scats, crowning for it's, the crown. Like, uh, hey. we, we, there's there's niche niche markets there. Um, what's going on, by the way, in Paris? What's with the bed bugs in Paris? Wait, I mean, what? they don't have a, they don't have a they don't have a dirty enough reputation. Mark, stay far stay away bad. from France when you're in Europe. It's bad. I'm not. Fashion there's week l- has been overrun by bed bugs. They're yeah. they're in the metro, and now right. Harvey, they're everywhere. Thinking that, Everyone, all the models of fashion, we're going to bring them back to New York City. We have to call Jordan Roth over to a, Jordan Roth's house with a can of Raid. That's right. There's it's bugs to to everywhere. I'm out. 
Yeah, les bugs. Les, 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 les lice. Les lice. Mon les petit bugs. boog. Do you think they were sent there by Italian designers, though? There is that theory. Saboteur. Oh, Italian. Saboteur. 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 Oh, I just realized I'm wearing my, I'm wearing my, Cindy, Cindy gave me these. Oh, I thought that was just new hair. Right well, it is. It matches my hair. <laughs> Wait, Harvey, tell tell me about your quilting. Your quil- if you're not aware, Harvey is like a quilting machine. And the one you just yeah. did, which was the Garden, the Garden of Eden, of Eden was so with fucking the screen, cool. 3D snake on it. Yeah, it's very cool. How long does that take? To get something out of the snake or to make the snake? <laughs> um, oh, there goes my eye again. Um, how long? Trauma no, triggers. What, what, what happened was I wrote my, my memoir. Which Mark read and I read. Which called uh, I Was Better Last Night. And, um, and a funny thing, once I wrote that and then I did all the interviews and you, know, you had to do a lot of stuff, or oh, a book, you got to do a lot of, it's like worse than selling a movie because at least the movie plays in the theater goes away but a book stays out there a long time and it was a and it was a new york times bestseller so that made it even worse to call so i was very deep into all this really personal stuff and i gotta say i really didn't feel like writing afterwards Mm. i felt like i had sort of emptied the well you know that that thing the um the artist's way and they talk about, you know, the, you have to refill the well and you have to, and, and that's sort of the way it felt. Oh, you got the artist's way right there. <laughs> so you, so you know what I'm talking about. So I felt, I felt like I had expressed, and so I said, let me, I can't do nothing artistically. I, 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 that would make me crazy. And I really didn't really want to bake. I love the Great British Bake Off, but, yes. um. I'm a big enough girl. I don't need that. So uh, I had started quilting like 30 years ago, and I made a bunch of quilts, but I didn't really get deeply into it. So I decided that's what I would do, and I have gotten really into it and and really love it. And and um, I have like five quilts up for sale right now in different charities. But this past Sunday, we had the Broadway Cares Equity Fights yeah. AIDS um flea market flea market my quilting made are you ready i 18, i'm assuming $18, it's a thousand dollars eighteen yeah. thousand dollars they're so beautiful and they're iconic and a celebrity made them so it's like i feel like in the not too near future those are going to be worth a ton well, I wrote, of money i wrote to all my friends who have quilts of mine and said don't let the dog pee on it mm-hmm. don't it let bed bugs closet, get a hold of get it a, oh my god don't let it go to paris don't take it <laughs> to out Paris. Of Paris. Don't win. But you know what? Uh, Jordan actually sent me pictures, not from this year. I think it was last year. From and I think it was the Paris Fashion Show, where um, a lot of clothing was quilted. Uh huh. No, they they're did, very they chic. Of, they're very chic. So I so and then and then and then Sarah Jessica wore um, a bedspread. Uh, made into a coat on <laughs> on her show. No, I mean it really. If you look yeah. at it, it really is a bedspread, a yellow yeah. bedspread made into a coat. So yeah, so I'm I've got my finger up the ass of of the, of the public. Yeah, you really do. I, I want one. I, right? I I know I'm way down on the list, but I'll do it for it. You want a finger? You, you no. You want a, I would like to smell a, it at least. Jacket. You would like I'd a, get quilt, fingered for a quilt? Quilted jacket. Quilt. For yeah. a jacket. Yeah. There is not a lot I wouldn't do for one of your quilts. Oh, I'll do it. I, I'm gonna. We'll keep that. We'll keep that in mind. Yeah. We'll keep that. We'll, we'll keep Can I go back and ask you a question about I was better last night? Yes. You said in it that I'm still confused as to whether I'm a man or a woman. Is that something that you struggle with, or something that you confidently pro- proclaim? Because who the fuck cares? Uh, I'll tell you. Last night I interviewed Amy Schneider. You know um, Amy Schneider, the Jeopardy champion yeah. so i interviewed her at uh, her book came out yesterday called in the form of a question yeah and i interviewed her at the y and that's and we talked about that we talked i mean i didn't talk about me i was talking about her because it's her book coming sure out. but <laughs> but what most people don't understand and we still have a lot of trouble with is the difference between 
sexuality and gender and how they have nothing to do with one another. So once you start working that out and you start working on the gender, then what is it about the gender? I mean, Amy was saying that she had to get to the point where not wearing women's clothes or wearing makeup, she still was a woman. Ah. Which I found, like, that's like one of the reasons I would never say I really was a woman because I just don't want to put lipstick on all the time. It's just mm. a lot of work. But she said, but she's gotten to the point where she does it. So I don't know. I think, I think we have all of it in us. I think we right. all do. I think people that claim, you know, I know, blah, 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 they're just uh, scared. They're just uh, scared. They're not, they just don't want to ask real questions of themselves because we're just not simple. Human beings are not simple. We have yeah. all of these emotions and, you know, and a lot of us, obviously, they say, I'm, I'm very scattered, right, because I've been quilting. Um, you know, you cut up things and glue them together. You cut them up and sew them together. It makes you very <laughs> scattered, right? Um, they say that the happiest people are married, have a job, not a career. They have a job. They believe in God and go to a church, and they follow all the rules. Why are they happy? You have to ask yourself. Because they don't ask any questions. It's <laughs> Life is really, like you go to church and you say God's watching and all that, and you do it. Life is simple. You know, yeah. you know what to do. Somebody's telling you what to do all the time. You don't ever ask a question. But the rest of us, the questioning ones, it's scary. Have you never felt, I mean, Jamie, Amy was talking about at first, and you can probably understand this, uh, I stopped at this level. At first, she thought she was a drag queen. That was mm. enough for me, you know. <laughs> I, I was fine with that. Um, but she said, but she she said she started feeling like a drag queen was simply a character that one played, right. and not and not truly authentic. A heart. Yeah, yeah, not the the authentic. So. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Do I have an answer for myself? No. Do I have to have an answer for myself? No. Yeah, it's interesting because so I, I look at photos life. of my family photo book and there's so many pictures of me in dresses and heels and stuff. And I then think, well, if I were born today, would I then be trans? And then it leads me back to what you're saying. And it's like, maybe I'm everything all at once without having to recategorize to myself as something. Right. I mean, and, and a lot of men... Um, and you know this much more than I do because it's not my world, but the men that go to the gym and have to build up these muscles and stuff, that's a form of drag, is it not? Yeah. 100. It is. Well, that's why all the drag. straight people, it's so funny to say it when, you know, when straight people are against drag and stuff, it's like you put on so much drag. These, these guys who are uh, doing testosterone to go to Congress and make bills against drag queens is so insane. It's so it's so crazy, yeah. and and yeah. Amy and I were talking about, especially about the whole bathroom thing. You know, oh it's God. like she was saying, like, you know, in the ladies' room, there are little booths. We go in, you can't <laughs> see nothing, you can't do it. What the fuck? And, right. and are you telling me that a, a person has to go through saying I'm really trans and all that to get into a ladies' room to look at naked ladies, which you can't see anyway? So like, couldn't a guy just put on a dress and go uh, 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 and go in there? I mean. <laughs> What is wrong with these people? What is wrong? What are they so scared of? And the thing is, what are they scared of? They don't want to ask questions about themselves. Right. They don't want to That's look in. That's what this They don't want to look in because yeah. it's not simple. It really isn't. An examined life is not a simple one. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you guys I'm a woman. Well, you know what? That's why we never slept together. I don't know. Oh. I'm into boys. <laughs> um, what's happening next, Harvey? I never slept with any of my children. None of my children. <laughs> I just want to go on record saying my children were all safe under my roof. Right? Uh, no thank God I'm not one of your children. On. We no all grooming. Slept, we all slept together. We all slept together on that couch. We took a uh, lot of naps. We took a lot shows. of naps. Oh. You know what? That was the best nap I ever took was in between shows. It was so that calm was and so, quiet. It was there. so it, right, except for Rashad's um, uh, Rashad and and um, and uh, Peter and their their takeout, which oh you know, my the God, smell the would smelly, sort of wake us up. The smelly, yeah. oily Broadway his, fish. He, no way. Uh, what was it? Broadway Kentucky fish. fried chicken. 
girl. It was a Kentucky Fried Chicken and then Peter. And there was just a puddle uh, on the carpet under my under my clothes. There was a puddle of oil from Peter Matthew Smith's uh, Grease. leftovers. Grease. But we did. We'd all, we'd all, I had this sort of bed, this sort of day bed. We'd throw the pillows off and we'd all just pile in and everybody knew. If you went in there, you got to be really quiet. And we all slept together. Camilla and you and me. Shoshana. And, and Shoshana. And we were all Kooky. in there together. Oh, my cookie. <laughs> Katie baby. My little Katie baby and her, big, and, her, and her big flouncy stuff. Talk about a drag queen. Oh, my God. So much drag <laughs> happening. So much drag. Okay, um, wait, I have a question. Uh, what is next? What's happening next, Harvey? Yes, go ahead, Mark. What? I just bringing what up that you guys were in hairspray together. I have a question because I'm, I'm unhappy. Oh, um, what you've won four Tonys for best actor, best play, best book. Is there one that's more personal and that you're proud of? Is there a category that you really just hits home for you? I, well, the funny part is I have won four, but I actually have been given six. I have mm. six Tony Awards because because t- two times um, La Caja Fall is the only show that won. Best show, best musical when it first opened, and both revivals won best revival. So I have oh, three wow. for writing Lacage. Um, and then I have uh, Hairspray, and I have uh, Torch Song acting and Torch Song writing. Um, well, your first, you know, your virginity is always. So the very first one I got was was uh, for writing Torch Song. So that's probably, you know, but, but it, it was all, I mean, I didn't. Uh, it was all such a way, and it's it's so different now than it was then. I mean, or I was different then. I don't know. They're in my bathroom. Yeah, where are they? <laughs> all six. Yeah, kind of I have bathroom. a shelf uh, okay. a, a very up in the back of the bathroom. Yeah, I'm the only one who can see it back there. The cleaning ladies, don't they? God forbid they should ever dust it. But um, <laughs> and and they're sort of spaced between. You know those Broadway. Um, uh, 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 globes, you know the the snow globes. Snow globes. They have all yeah. the bro- they have all the Broadway shows. They put it out every year, and the, after a couple of years, they leak and it's a mess. Yeah. Anyway, I have so they're they're interspersed with those. Most of my awards are in a box in the basement. I mean, I used to. I am so bad. I used to leave awards on subways. You know, they'd give me the key to the city, and I'd just leave it on the subway. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm, uh, because you know. Uh, this story is actually in in my in my uh, memoir. On opening night of La Caja Fall, we were standing in the back of the audience, and the place is going insane. Right, Marvin Krauss, who was the general manager and, and an old gentleman, and he came up to me and he put his arm around me and said, "Enjoy tonight, and then go away." Oh, and I looked at him and he said, "There are people that will hang out here the rest of their lives. They will never move on." Whoa. They will be La Caja Fall and the night that La Caja Fall opened and blah, blah. And that will be the rest of their lives. You have an entire, well, remember, I was not even 30. You have the rest of your life to live. Go away. Oh. And so I've always kept that in mind. Like, you can get very trapped by your past. Mm. Of course, I love my past and I honor and I'm honored by everyone. But it's, it's, it doesn't belong in your every day. Mm-hmm. It's it's tomorrow that's important, or right now that's right important. Right now, yeah. And, but thinking about what you could do tomorrow, but living in the past with a bunch of po- you notice you're looking at my house. You see any posters of any of my shows or anything? I just see yeah. one giant that fern. Is oh that fern. gorgeous well, house? Okay. Now what happened is what happens is this is a um, this is uh, I uh, I gotta take this off and I'll turn this so you can see it. <laughs> Can you see the duck? Yes. Uh, this duck is is a, a seat from a child's carousel. Oh wow! And um, so it's actually a chair, you know, in the in a, in a child carousel. You used to sit in it. Okay, so, like there was a pole. Okay. Yeah, well, no, it wasn't even a pole because it was just a seat. There's like a oh, seat to like sit on a in. merry-go-round type. Of like thing. yeah, like small, like a children's yeah, merry-go-round. Chill. So that's actually what that is with the little glass sides and everything. And so um, during the winter, um, this friend of mine, Lauren, uh, you may remember Lauren, um, she, uh, she always gives me a fern 
when the season is changing and I stick okay. it in there because during the summer and all that I do flowers I do yeah. you know flowers for my garden and I do all kinds of stuff but the fern is there until Christmas then at Christmas it gets decorated for Christmas but it's on a little turntable and you notice what the light is over the can you see what that is it looks like a Game of Thrones piece it's a Jewish star from the top of a synagogue oh my god inside. you can actually see the 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 um you can, there's nothing oh, I can new see in my now. house. Yeah. yeah, we we drilled it and put lights underneath it, wow. and it goes up and down on a on a on a pulley. You can, I live okay, in a I barn. Have to come oh my visit. god! Oh my no, you god! Didn't. I live in a barn. It's one room. It's one giant room, three stories high. That's a catwalk up there. Word. And, um, and yeah, so I and I live with all this crap that I love, which is a lot of car- a lot of um, Coney Island stuff. Um, a lot of carnival stuff because that's what I love, and I built this house around my collection of crap. I love it. Here at Discretion it's Advice, not, it doesn't look we have... like crap though. What? What, Mark? What do we have <laughs> here at Discretion Advice? We have an Crabs. award show called the Bonies, and this duck. There is a category for best use of house plant in the porn awards, and I think this duck would clear the room and win them all. You could put it right oh. next to your Tony in the bathroom, <laughs> Tony and a bony. Or leave it on the subway. Yeah. <laughs> Harvey, thank you for coming on the show. We well, love sure. you so much. Well, we love you. you. Well, I'm very glad to, 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 to join this. I'm sorry I wasn't dirtier. You're oh, you, you're dirty. filthy. Oh, thank you. You're a filthy fuck. <laughs> we love you so much. Thank you. Our talk coming soon. Where can people uh, donate and like pay a bunch of money to donate to BCEFA and maybe buy a, a bid on a quilt? Well, my quilts, my qu- those quilts are gone now. What's coming up? The Richfield Playhouse, Richfield, Connecticut, is gonna uh, is gonna auction off one of my quilts in a couple of weeks. Um, the the Danbury Women's Center is doing a raffle with one of my quilts, and who else? There, oh, there, are all out. oh, La Mama. The Mama ETC, the theater I began with, is auctioning off a quilt of mine um, next Saturday, I think, something like that. So go online, look, go to yeah, La Mama, go, online, go to the, donate a bunch go of money. To co- cotton, cotton candy fabrics and quilts is the store that's doing the raffle. So there's like four of my quilts out there to be grabbed. Otherwise, you got to blow me. Yeah, and look out for Harvey's new porn. Send the hey, address. Carpenter up on the roof. I see you. <laughs> Carpenter on the roof. You know what? Do you know that my entire kitchen is actually made out of the floor of Fiddler on the Roof? Remember when I did Fiddler oh on the Roof? Oh my god! The architect came to came to see the show and said, "What happens to that gorgeous floor?" And I said, "They throw it out." He said, "I'll, I'll make a kitchen," it. and that's what it is. Wow. So, so gay is into hate. That's Yiddish for going good health. <laughs> and and uh, may your stripes take care of you and watch out for bed bugs and John Hill you just keep trying on that bar I know you'll flip over I'll try soon. one of these days of, I love you I'm gonna come days. see you in, in okay. New York soon I love Bye, you so baby. much thank you thank you thank Bye, you get Harvey's piece. book even though he's sick of yes. talking about it go get it yes no, no, no! It's a good book <laughs> it's, it's a great it's, book it's always a good book and get Amy Schneider's also it's a good book love you Harvey and Cheetah Rivera's. It's not such a good book, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Welcome back to the show. I'm John Hill here with Mark McNamara, joined by one of my favorite people in the world, Jim Ferraros from season one of American Idol, who has a brand new. Yes, it is trash day. Yes, you heard a motorcycle just drive my apartment. Don't shade me in the comments. Um, you have a brand new single out. Take my bow. I just listened to it. It's a great song. Um, how are you, Jim? Welcome to the show. I'm good. How are you? It's been a long time. Probably. I know. Thanks you look so here. good. You're in your you're just like aging like a fine wine. You look so Thank handsome. You. As are you, sir. As are you. Thank you. Wait, how do you Mark, guys know you each look other? pretty. Thank you. You know. How do we know? You know, the. go ahead. You remember this was in New York with Scott and Evans. Mm-hmm. And I think this was probably oh, 17 or 18 years ago. Yeah. And just, I think you were just around. And I was like, oh, hi, I'm Jim. And you were like, hey, I'm John. And I was like. It was actually hey. during the time there was. Yeah, I used to do shows with Scott and Evans. He used to do XL Idol at XL. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he and I used to perform together a lot. And that was right after I had actually bartended at XL. And then I was 
then I was working on Broadway shows and stuff. And yeah, we were in the mix. We were around. No, it was not some sort of bukkake circle, Mark. I know I know what's going I on in your head. Although, I was going to say, have you guys never, ever held hands or kissed? We were, yeah, I sure. <gasps> you guys. No. Jim, aren't you a happily married man now? Twice, yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> Um, tell us about this. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the song "Take My Bow." How did it come about? And I mean, we always want new music, and now at this point, like American Idol taking off after yeah. season one, like you guys are American royalty for life. And I just feel like more music, more often from you guys. How did this song come about, and why now? Um, that's a good question. So, you know, this is twenty-one years ago when I was on Idol, so there wasn't a lot of queer representation. You know, there wasn't a lot of out gay American pop singers. Um, and I was just 19 at the time. So I think after the show, I took a beating on that show. I mean, you know, Simon was terrible. And I was like, all right, I'm not really a good singer. Um, I'm just going to try and go into acting, which is kind of what I wanted to do to begin with. But then this producer reached out and he's like, no, you can sing and you should sing. And I fucking believe in you. So you should believe in yourself. And I thought, okay, let's do this then. Um, and then I did, and it kind of took shape. And then I signed my first deal with, uh, Kosh Records, which is in New York at the time. And we had, I had a finished project. I was just like, here are 10 songs. Can you just wow. distribute it basically? So, um, you know, it was, it was hard at that time because, you know, being openly gay, I came out publicly with the advocate when I was, uh, 19, they had the, you know, the exclusive to my coming out story and there was no blueprint to follow. There wasn't a, a young, you know, gay pop singer that people were like, okay, let's take this career and, you know, sort of emulate that. And so yeah. I played a lot of pride events, which is great. It was a lot of fun, but I think that there was more that I could have done. Um, and then eating out my first film sort of was great cross promotion because that was around the same time as my first album roller coaster came out. So, and that was a fun uh, experience and yeah. So I think now it's like, I look back and all this queer representation now is so inspiring and you know, with just the incredible artistry that we have, I'm like, well, why not now? Like, why not dip my toe in? Let's put a song out. Or now it's like, it's shifted. It's changed. It's not about our sexuality as much as it is the song, you know? And yeah, I thought, let's, let's try it. Let's do it. This song is a sexy song, though. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, lyrically, there's a lot of double entendres on it. Yeah. Meaning just like when I first came out, I wasn't ready for you then, but I'm ready for you now. And just that fantasy of, you know, what do you want me to be? And I can be that for you. It's sort of lyrically kind of, you know, yeah. And plus I'm 40. Like, it's not like I'm coming off of the Disney channel and I'm like, oh, I have to be safe. <laughs> you know, like the jig is up. Like, you know, I mean, I've had some sex. So let's just talk about that. <laughs> at least twice you've been married. So at least. you've had sex two times, at least. In that's, all, that's all I've had. It's just <laughs> twice. <laughs> so. um, and the album artwork, I should say, take a look at it online. Uh, yeah. You're definitely. Oh, my dog just vomited. Uh, <laughs> not from looking at your album artwork. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great cross timing there. Oh, yeah. You're okay. All right. Sorry. He's fine. Oh, no, He's just, okay. he goes through this. He drinks water too quickly. But the album artwork is so hot to trot. You are giving jock strap. You're giving yeah. look back at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're, you're killing it. What, um, are you a big worker outer? Yeah, I am. I like to switch it up. I mean, I'm not like you, but I do love CrossFit, but then I also like to switch it up and just do lifting and just cardio. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's, I think for me, you know, being 40, looking at my parents, you know, my mom is, she'll be 76. You know, my dad mm -hmm. is getting up to 70, you know, and they don't have the best, you know, health, you know, current situation. My mom was diagnosed with cancer last year. So I think for me, just looking at that and just taking care of myself, you know, in and out always is just really, really important. So that's how, that's what happened to me. I saw my dad's health declining yeah. and I noticed that, you know, I was getting my yearly physical and just like, hoping for the best you know and like every day was sort of a cheat day and then i was like what am i doing and i'm older than you so i was like i'm gonna just take you know a, a little bit at a time actually make a commitment to just get a little bit better and once i started feeling better and looking better then i became orthorexic um i was doing a little research i don't ever do research but i was i was looking just to see uh and digging back in the day, because you talk about American Idol, you've been talking about it for 21 years, but I didn't realize that you had you had come out to some friends 
but that Fox are they knew that you were gay, but they didn't uh, put that on the show at first because they didn't want you to have an unfair advantage on the show, which I think is so fascinating because even they knew that that might launch you a little bit more. Um, they say that that's the reason. I don't know if that's uh-huh. the reason, um, <laughs> but. And I think if you look over the span of, especially like the first, I think, eight to 10 seasons, if you were a queer contestant, and I think if you were loudly queer, you were very much an easy target. I think you made for great television. I think they took advantage of a lot of us because we were just so vulnerable in that moment. And, Do you think they did you a favor? Um, I think, I think looking back at it, I wouldn't have changed anything. I just wish it would have just been on my terms, meaning, you know, if... I just felt kind of pushed to do it because I thought they were going to run with the story anyway. So I hadn't even told my dad at that point. I was like, I need to tell my dad first before I come out publicly. Mm -hmm. I owe him that, you know? So I just wish that I had just kind of owned the timing a little bit more. Is there uh, other new songs coming after Take My Bow or is this a one-off? So here's the deal. So tomorrow I've got four remixes coming out. um, And the goal is to sort of launch this in the UK first. So I've got three remixes that are kind of geared more, more towards the UK. Uh, we wanted to get it to chart there because I think it just gives me more credibility here in the States. Sure. Uh, uh, just let me stop you. Since yeah. you mentioned UK, <sighs> did you know the difference between the UK, Great Britain, England, and Ireland? And Northern Ireland. And uh, Wales. <laughs> it's just, okay, it's been I'm a runner in, through this episode. I'm in We're Edinburgh just... right now. Do you think I'm in Great Britain? Okay. No. Do you think I'm in the UK? Do you think he's in the UK? Yes. Do you think? <laughs> I don't think. So, I don't understand how John keeps thinking yeah, he was right. You are, when no, he you're didn't correct. Say that. <laughs> you're correct. You are. You are oh. correct, Jim. John oh, is not. Yeah. John. Still I said I'm you're in the Euros UK, here. but not Great Britain. Oh, oh God. Gotcha. The Euro thing. It, there was a time and place when that was true. Anyway, we know. We all know where everyone is. <laughs> Thank glad I passed. Okay. Brexit semi recent. Okay. Going back to, to the days of Idol, were yeah. there like did you go on the tour with everybody? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so yeah. I've seen you. I've seen you perform then because I went to that yeah. tour with my little yes. sister. Um was what was it like behind the scenes? Was there anybody were there any divas back from the get? You know what's funny is we really weren't like that. Because here's here's the thing. I think if you look at the first season they really focused more on us as the contestants, less than like the judges or like the celebrity, you know, quarrels between Nicki Minaj and, you know, Mariah Carey, or let's put Ellen DeGeneres as a judge, which was so random. I just feel so like crazy. the focus was really on us. And so we all rooted for each other. Like I didn't even care. I was like, I'm just glad to be here. I really could give a shit. So everyone was just rooting for everyone. And, you know, I mean, were there some diva moments? I mean, there were people that didn't necessarily get along as well, but I mean, I, I yeah. loved it. I mean, RJ and I were very close. I mean, thank God I had him because, you know, we were able to hook up a lot. So thank God I had found solace in RJ, literally. Um, Sorry, what so, do you mean by hook up? Like hook up? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Work. Okay, I mean, we're Justin it. and Kelly hooking like up. If you, if you go through that moment, though, like if you find, if you go through that kind of experience, and you're young, and you find someone attractive, and it's like, that's just going to happen. I feel yeah. like, you know. Can you still I'm watch still it? Like, time. can you go back and watch it now, or are you just like, it's so odd because you've lived it? Uh, do you mean like the newer seasons now, or my yeah. own season? You, the newer seasons. It's just so, it's honestly, it's so different than, than it. I just think it's just become a, basically ad advertisement show and because there i couldn't even tell you the last five or six winners like i couldn't even like there are people that won that are being dropped from their record label because they wait too long to put their records out and so if you don't chart or if you don't tick tock your way to a huge following it, you just don't matter and i think idol should be taking better care of it's like one, two, three, four, five, you know, players just to like say, hey, we got you for a year. Let us help to kind of make sure that your career at least has a good jumping off point rather than to be like, well, you won. So the rest is on you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's really tough, I think, to to go through that. And then just well, the name of... is American Idol. It is such right. high stakes expectations yeah. that you're winning yeah. this and, you know, to just be given like a tiny bit of uh 
shine. You're expecting a little bit uh, more help, probably. We are getting the finger from Cameron. We have to wrap up. But Jim Ferraros, thank you so much for stopping by. We love you so much here. Please come back um, and download Take About. If you're in the UK, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, or Wales, make sure that you especially download Take My Bow by Jim Ferraros. I'm going to go house to house right after this is done. Thank you so much, Jim. (laughs) Thank Thank you for having me. We love you. Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I'm John Hill here with Mark McNamara. I've adjusted my microphone and I'm hunched over like a little teeny tiny little shrimp. Uh, So a shout out to my posture. Here with Jonas Jackson, who is in Edinburgh with you. Am I correct? You are not correct. Oh, well. You're from there. (laughs) I'm back home in London, but yes, I am from Mm. uh, Edinburgh. He rapped and he left yesterday. So Jonas, let me ask you. What is the difference mm-hmm. between the UK, England, Great Britain, Scotland, Northern Ireland? Where am I right now? Well, you're in Edinburgh currently, which is north of England. So, uh, but you're the very southern tip. So I know where I am physically, Scotland. but am I in England right now? <coughs> no, you're in Scotland. But I'm in Great Britain? You're part of the United Kingdom. No, no, United Kingdom. So I'm not in Great Britain. I was correct. Yes. No, you were not correct. You thought that we were using the euros. I said you were in the United <laughs> Kingdom, but you're not, not in Great Britain. It's not the United Kingdom of Great Britain. <laughs> it, this is this is the quandary as well, to be honest. Yeah, Great Britain is fine. I don't think we care too much. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so you are making your comeback after how long of a break have you taken from the industry? About three years, actually, because uh, COVID hit and uh, obviously no one really wanted to use British models. Um, mm. So we pretty much got stuck where we were. Um, and the most annoying thing is my body was at its all time best during COVID, ironically. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's good to be back. Um, and we just filmed two fantastic scenes together in Edinburgh. I had some brilliant uh, scene partners. Uh, chemistry on set was really good um, and just the whole atmosphere was really relaxed so uh, helped me perform at my best really so. what makes a good scene partner uh, attentiveness I've mm. had some pretty difficult scene partners in the past um, but it's more so because people think that they can't ask you to help them um, they feel like they have to do everything themselves and actually, if you just get involved with each other, it's just a much more relaxed, enjoyable experience. Huh. That's a good... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a note of that. Ask for help. It's like, yeah, it's like any good relationship. <laughs> just communicate. You're fine. Communicate. Communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Asking yeah. for now, help is the first step in a lot of things. What I found fascinating when I learned this about you is that you have basically died 11 times. Not once, not twice. 11 how, well, how... I'm going to try and go for a record of 12, perhaps. No, I'm not really. I'm not. Um, uh, I've had quite a few cardiac arrests over the last six years, unfortunately. Um, so a lot of surgeries performed. Uh, I can go into depth if you want to, but I don't think... Have you seen the light? To. Is there life after death? Have you seen a white light? Have you seen God? Have you seen heaven? Hell, maybe? No, I mean, what is it? Heaven and hell is what we make of our life on Earth. But um, I haven't seen the light because that would be the sign of a a hypoxic brain. Um, That's when our brain's been starved of oxygen. So that's when we start seeing things. Um, Luckily, I had a fantastic nursing team around me that supported me. So and kept me going as much as possible. Like, I don't like that whole idea of like, if you're good, you're going to go to heaven. Like, I don't want to go up there. I'm scared of heights. Like, let's go someplace cool, like underwater or to the (laughs) beach. I'm not going to the fucking sky. But where do you draw your strength from to, like, get through it and, like, keep going? Um, Having really good friends around me, to be honest. Uh, I live not too far away from my best friend. We've been friends for eight years. Um, and just make sure that the friends that you surround yourself with are positive people um, because they're essentially the family that you choose and they're the ones that always help you get through uh, really difficult times but sometimes it can be a struggle and you don't necessarily communicate with them Uh, but the great thing is they try to encourage you to do so you just have to be receptive to it so Mm. 
that's the important thing for has me. it made you more grateful that you've had some uh close to death experiences uh well i mean i was i was official well technically i was classed as dead uh multiple mm. times um I don't know if it's made me more appreciative. I think I try to live life as best as I can now, probably more so than I did before. Oh, I should try uh, that. Especially, well, I mean, it's never too late to start, to be honest. <laughs> it might be from according to TikTok. <laughs> he, did, he just called you, he just called oh, us Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just as old, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Are you? Are you? No, you're not. You're younger than us. We're like 80. Am I? I no. Know. Okay. So are we allowed to talk? I, about I'm age? gay dead, but <laughs> <laughs> that's that's number you are, twelve. You died again. Pronounced gay dead. <laughs> I'm gay dead. Yeah. I'm no. I'm 36. I'm having to. I think I need to start embracing my uh, daddy era at this point. So you're on your way. The beard is full. Yeah. Word. I mean, it's always been full since I was about 14. So. Um, really? I I don't think that's ever going to fall off anytime soon. Yeah. Oh. I've. Uh, it takes me four days to grow a full beard. I can't do it. I am 40, can and this is all I can get. <laughs> Just be thankful for what you have. That's that's the key thing. Aww, like I see? do prefer to be clean-shaven, but I know the industry doesn't like me being clean-shaven. I look like a uh, a teenage lesbian, to be honest, when I shave my beard. So. <laughs> There's Which a market how John would classify me. <laughs> Just ask Jojo Siwa. Nope. <laughs> now, Jonas, you were brought here to film a global entry scotland edition how would you describe yes. scottish men uh i would say they are uh very unique um probably you're gonna see a lot more ginger men than you normally see uh a lot of them like to have beards they're a little bit rough around the edges um but being uh gay men we seem to enjoy the rougher um <clears throat> They're quite burly. They like tossing off large poles. Um, <laughs> and of course, who doesn't like seeing a man wearing a skirt? Or sorry, we call it a kilt, but same thing. And we try. So. We, we, we went shopping for a kilt the other day. I did not realize how expensive they are. Like the cheap one at this souvenir shop yep. was like $600 or pounds or as John would think, euros. I, I want to go yep. back to something that you said a second ago. The word ginger, as you and Cameron are both redheads, is ginger an offensive term? Like, can people who are not it, redheaded say ginger? I think it used to be. Like, I, I think as a kid, probably it used to be used as an insult. But I think it's actually quite, it's quite a nice niche to be in because there's not that many of us. And actually, it's <laughs> whenever you go places, even if you're amongst other people that don't have ginger hair, like regardless of race, they think you're exotic, which is fantastic for me because it means I get more attention. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Speaking of more attention, Jonas, where can people find you and follow you? OK, so uh, we'll start off with the most uh, PG, and that will be my uh, Instagram, which is at the underscore Jonas Jackson um yeah i had to put an underscore in there there were too many people trying to be me and <laughs> on my twitter it's jonas jackson triple x because i mean it's the most obvious um you can also find me on only fans and just for fans and lots of other places um just have to follow the links in my main social media and soon on nakedsword.com and global entry scotland thank you so much jonas for delivering two amazing scenes and thank you for being here. We will see you soon. Welcome back to the show. I'm John Hill here with Mark McNamara. And I will be honest, I did that we had a tiny break and I needed sustenance. So I did put a donut flavored Quest bar in my mouth. For those of you who've been following our pod since day one, you know what that means. Wow, wow. I my Cock. day one dicks. Yes, day one dicks. Um, for the record, again, I will say I have seen John Hill's dick. It is beautiful. It looks nothing like a Quest Bar. It's just like this giant, like four stacked, like beautiful dick with a freckle. It's more like this. I can't see. See, I have no, I have no service here in the UK, Edinburgh, okay. Scotland, Wales. Let's Wait, quickly name. Also, oh, mm -hmm. 
Did you want me to read that comment? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, Cameron, you said you had something very mean to say to us that a commenter said, and I said, save it for air. Read us to filth on camera. So now tell us what these motherfuckers said about us. Um, so I thought of this because John was saying how someone said he was old. So um, on YouTube, 12 days ago, someone said, like, oh my god, old people, uck, okay, they smelly, they're old. Like, for the amount of time I spend in the mirror applying lotion so I can look so exuberant, how dare you make me look at your old translucent skin? Put it away. Well, honey, we support the trans community, so trans Thank you for your comment, you Helen want. Keller. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that was probably that Cameron. No sense, that. bitch. It's my alt. That was a horrible joke. I, I don't mean that actually as a Helen Keller joke. I just meant... In, in, are there like, people who are like made one mad about Helen Keller not being able to see? There's a lot of people who are blind. People Fuck. do not like an ableist joke, including me. We were asked to round up our favorite comebacks. So we're going to pop off a list of our favorite ones and round them up. Mark, what's on your list of favorite comebacks? So you might have known him from Indiana Jones and Goonies, but Ki Hui Kwan made the comeback of I Feel the Century, of winning the Oscar for Everywhere All at Once happening right now. I loved him back in the day. I love that he came back. And what are you laughing at me for? I think it's, or are you laughing at John, who I cannot say, but I th think he's fantastic. That was not the name of the movie. Well, what the fuck was it? Everywhere, I, he everywhere, everywhere, all at once at the same time, but happening right now. Yeah, we know what you mean. You know what I mean. So he's, my, he's my number one, one. comeback. What you got? Yeah, that is a really good one. Um, mine is just Jessica Simpson coming back as a boot entrepreneur <laughs> and making a billion dollars. Come on, Shrimpson. That's a good one. You're going to laugh at me. I'll come back and make a billion dollars and you're going to wear it on your feet every day. Yeah. House love down it. boots. House down. House down boots. Uh, my second one is the Scream franchise coming back from a horrible Scream 4, rebooting, redoing itself. Scream 5 and 6, especially 6, were so good. I'm extremely nervous that it's changing directors for Scream 7. And now, like, the guy who made Happy Death Day or Happy Valentine, whatever, some goofy movie is now the director, which I'm super not excited about. But let's hope he doesn't fuck shit up Chris for Scream Landon? 7. I love Chris. That's uh, We like Chris in this house. We do. Well, I'm love not him. in that house. Love him. Yes, you What do. you got? Um, I probably also, like him personally. I, I just don't like those movies. What you got? I like Happy Death Day as well. But I, mm, yeah. nope. I love all horror movies. Uh, my next one on my list is my favorite comeback. One of my favorite comebacks of all time is Your Mama's So Fat When She Puts On A Red Dress All The Kids Say Kool-Aid. It's a good comeback. <laughs> That's... Work, work, Kool Aid. Um, my next one is Melrose Place. When they put Amanda Woodward slash Heather Locklear on that screen to save the day, it really rejuvenated that series and pop sizzled it all the way to my cooter. So thank you, Amanda Woodward. Thank you, Melrose Place. My last There's one is people. a little bit basic. It's my favorite comeback. This is my number one. Is the comeback starring Lisa Kudrow. Hi. Love that show so much. And I know they took like 10 years between seasons and they talked about maybe taking another long break. So we're probably around that that mark. So please come back. Mm -hmm. um, honorable mentions to Jason Bateman, who graced us in Silver Spoons and then had a comeback with, with Arrested Development. So I love you, Jason. And Marlon Brando, who went from like Streetcar Named Desire to like nothing for a while and then came back in The Godfather. So that was like a really great comeback for me and my Italian heritage. And I Thank want you, you to come that. back home. I'm going to come back home. I'm leaving tomorrow. I have two more scenes to do. I, it's about nine o'clock here. So I have to run. Thank, thank you so much, everyone who listened. Love you, Cameron. Love you, John. Please follow us on Love all you. the socials at discatfond.com. That's D-I-S-C-A-D-P-O-D. Like and subscribe to the newsletter, to YouTube. Comment, give us five stars. And comment on our, our Spotify and our Apple because I read those. John, you old ass motherfucking anti lotion bitch. I will see you soon. Love you. Go make sure you buy tickets to see his show, San Francisco, October 12th. 12th. See you there. Love you guys. Bye. And come to our live show. Live, live show, show November 10th. We will announce the, the guest by the next episode. So stick around. We'll announce the lineup next episode, November 10th at Red Eye in New York City.
Bye. Brown eye.